Makers and Takers, a non-fiction finance book published in 2016, is authored by Rana Faruhar, an experienced financial journalist serving as the economics columnist at Time magazine. With regular appearances on CNN and public radio as an economics analyst, Faruhar presents a compelling argument in the book, asserting that the financial system in the United States perpetuates injustice and economic inequality, Posing a significant risk of instability, Faruhar highlights the disproportionate influence of the finance industry within the United States. Despite creating only 4% of new jobs and representing 7% of the economy, it wields considerable power over the mindset of influential figures such as politicians, CEOs, and even everyday consumers. This dominance in culture and policymaking often leads to economic decisions that favor the industry at the expense of the average person. A stark example is the 2008 financial crisis, where the finance industry reaped substantial gains while ordinary individuals suffered the loss of their homes and small businesses originally designed to serve as a support system for individuals in maximizing their wealth. The finance industry has become self-serving, benefiting primarily itself. The deep entanglement of politicians and CEOs with the finance sector impedes the establishment of a fair system that benefits everyone. Faruhar explores various financial challenges faced by Americans in makers and takers. Stagnant wage growth plagues the majority of fast-growing industries, with many offering only minimum wage. Moreover, finance has taken center stage as the leading sector in America, prioritizing wealth management rather than the creation of tangible products and ideas that drive overall prosperity. Additionally, the finance market predominantly seeks to enrich itself rather than ensuring the equitable distribution of wealth among all citizens. The pervasive issues discussed in makers and takers result in a troubling wealth disparity, where a select few, primarily tied to the finance industry, wield an excessive concentration of resources. While this imbalance is undeniably unfair, the prevalence of financial thinking in American business and politics makes it challenging to break free from the detrimental habits that perpetuate it. A noteworthy observation made by Faruhar is the transformation of large corporations in America, resembling banks more than traditional enterprises. These companies prioritize profit maximization through financial maneuvers such as money shuffling, hedging, tax optimization, and trading, rather than focusing on innovation and the sale of tangible products. Although the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis is gradually receding at the time of the book's writing, Faruhar highlights the sluggish recovery due to the failure to address the essential economic needs of the majority, such as fair wages, job growth, comprehensive benefits, and affordable goods and services. Faruhar coins the term takers to describe individuals responsible for perpetuating this inequality. These include various players in the financial sector, CEOs, politicians, and financial regulators who exploit market systems to enrich themselves rather than benefiting society as a whole. One contributing factor to such behavior among large corporations and financial institutions is the doctrine of shareholder value maximization. This approach prioritizes the enhancement of company value on paper for the sake of shareholders, often at the expense of long-term investments and the profits of non-shareholder stakeholders, including employees. Additionally, the preferential tax treatment of shares and stocks incentivizes the drive for profit maximization through these assets. Consequently, top-level executives and companies often derive a significant portion of their compensation from stock options due to these reasons. This perpetuates a cycle of wealth consolidation, where only those with access to financial markets and substantial assets can accumulate wealth through trading stocks and shares. Unfortunately, the average person is unable to tap into the wealth trapped within the finance industry. Faruhar highlights this phenomenon by examining the case of Apple. The company has hoarded a significant portion of its cash in tax havens abroad, relying heavily on shares and dividends that face lighter taxation in the United States. Moreover, investors in the company exhibit reluctance to allocate funds towards research and development or new manufacturing facilities. Resulting in a self-sustaining financial loop, Faruhar presents numerous similar instances, including Coca-Cola colluding with Goldman Sachs to create an artificial aluminum shortage, thus driving up production costs and consequently the price of its product. 
Additionally, evidence of collaboration and collusion between major banks and politicians further reinforces the skewed system that primarily benefits those who can afford substantial investments. To rectify these issues, Faruhar proposes a comprehensive restructuring of the tax code to ensure fair taxation of shares and stocks. She also advocates for increased investments in tangible assets and emphasizes the importance of including labor representatives on corporate boards to provide insights and influence financial decision-making processes. These measures aim to address the inequities and imbalances within the financial system, fostering a more just and inclusive economic landscape. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.